Hey everyone. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, this argumentative essay template and what it looks like when it is filled in. Um, I've tried to make a couple other videos, but I know that like it's always good to have a lot of different examples so that you can, you know, get a broader idea of, of what things look like. So the one that I filled in today, um, again, I wanted to write something that was more relevant. Um, like I know I like doing fun ones as well, but for I, I guess I was in a serious mood today. So um, the one we're going to talk about today is education um, and the idea that post-secondary education in Canada should be free to Canadian citizens. Um, there are a number of countries in the world where you have to pay for university and there are a number of countries in the world in which university is free. Um, and so this is definitely something I believe in. I think that, you know, all kids in Canada, even poor kids, should be allowed to go to university um, and have it paid for because if it costs too much money, then poor kids can't go. And then that is just a way of keeping rich kids richer, which is not really fair because nobody chooses whose family to be born into. So um, here's what this is going to look like. So again, um, I created this template as like a guideline. So the stuff on the left tells you do this, do that. Um, where this came from, again, this was from uh, years ago. I was trying to teach essay writing and I thought, you know, it's kind of not fair. Like in math, you, you know, you can have like true and false and multiple choice and short answer. And with essays, it's just like an essay. And I thought, how can we make this easier so that an essay feels more like a, like a multiple choice or a true and false? Um, and so this is kind of what I came up with and I feel like it works. Um, so the idea here is that you're going to be given um, like prompts, like things, like tips on the left, and then you would fill it in on the right. And um, it says like, do this now, do this now, try this. Um, now you don't have to go, um, you don't have to do the like, everything that the instructions tell you to do. You can kind of deviate from the instructions. Um, you can also, if you have an idea, just start writing and just kind of keep going with it. The point of this is for people that are stuck, they don't really know how to write an essay. Um, is this going to get you uh, like an A plus? You know, I guess it depends on your grade. If you're in, you know, grade one or two, yeah, this is going to blow your teacher's mind. <laughs> you know, if you're in university, probably not, but this is a really good start. So um, if you don't really feel comfortable with essay writing, then please start with this. This will get you started. And then kind of once you get the hang of it, then you'll know where to go from there. But this is this is step one. So um, the first thing that I had to do when I was kind of brainstorming, which I think you guys should do too, is I knew I wanted to write about um, how university should be free well, or college um, for Canadians. Uh, but then I had to think of, okay, what are, what are the three things I'm going to divide my essay into? And so I actually started with this box. This is the very first box I filled out, um, is I had to decide, okay, so I'm going to talk about how right now it's not equal, right? For kids, if you've got poor kids and you've got ki like rich kids, it's not, it's not fair that, you know, everyone has to pay the same amount of tuition for rich kids. It doesn't, it's, it's not even, you don't even bat an eye at it, but for poor kids, this is like your family's life savings could be spent just on one year's of tuition. So, um, not really fair. Next is that, you know, if kids know that they can go to university, they're going to probably try harder in high school. If kids know that there is no money for university, they're probably not going to try as hard in high school because they're going to be like, whatever, why try? I can't, I can't afford it anyways. And so even your overall success rate, I think, is going to be improved even just by knowing that you can go to university if you want to. Um, finally, national improvement. There's a lot of research that states that generally the more successful the individuals are, the more successful the entire country is. So those are my three arguments. So that was actually the box I started with. When I did this, when, like, and I, it, it took me about, I don't know, two hours, three hours to type this up. I bounced around. I did one box on one page. I did a couple boxes on another page. I went easiest to hardest. For me, the hardest boxes are those transition statements. The boxes that are like this last box before the next one or the first box before the paragraph. Those I find really challenging boxes to fill in. Um, and so really the nice thing with this is that as long as you hand it in and every box is filled in, no one knows which box you filled in first. And so I would say grant yourself the permission to know that you can do whichever box you want in whichever order and, and it'll be easier. So um, I'm just going to go box by box and show you what we've got. So optional, start with a quote about your topic. And again, Nelson Mandela, love the man. So uh, I found a quote that he said, he said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So then it says you actually have to tell them who said it. I mean, it's good to have a quote, but if you just have the quote, no, no one's going to know who said it. So you want to put it in context. So then I said, Nelson Mandela is absolutely correct. 
the best tool we have to affecting change is knowledge. Then it says, write an interesting and generic statement about your topic. So I did, it's just generic. Access to education should not be defined by our access to wealth. Now it says, reword the statement. All you have to do is find synonyms to rephrase what you just said. The reason why we do this, it's not because our reader is maybe dumb or stupid or anything. It's sometimes we just say it and it, and it's so fast, it comes and goes and it doesn't register with the reader. So you want to rephrase it so that the reader is like, oh yeah, yeah, no, I hear that. I, I hear that. If you just say it once and you kind of run away from it, it, it may not even sink in. So that's all we're doing here. So I'm trying to take roughly this idea and either put it into different words or grow that idea. So I said, everyone should be able to achieve educational success, no matter which socioeconomic class they were born into. Next, it says, write a statement that gives the reader some idea of how important your topic is or how significant it is. So I write, a country's wealth can easily be connected to the literacy rate of its people and the level of academic achievement of its citizens. So trying to get people to see that there's there's actual international ramifications for this. Uh, and it's not just simply, you know, poor Bobby, he can't go. It's, it's the world is bigger than Bobby. So uh, tell the reader your thesis statement. So that is the line that I have right up here. Uh, my my whole my now a thesis statement is like it's if I if I took my whole essay and I summed it up into one main idea what is it what's my main argument so I said this essay will argue that post-secondary education in Canada should be free for all Canadian citizens now it says tell the reader how you will present your thesis statement by telling the reader the three body paragraphs which you will discuss so I said in order to effectively consider this claim this essay will examine the following three considerations equality for students student success and national improvement. I have to tell my reader what the three body paragraphs are. Otherwise, it's like inviting someone out and you're not telling them where they're gonna go. If you're like, hey, you wanna go out Friday night? And they're like, yeah, sure, what do you wanna do? And you're like, not telling you. <laughs> they're gonna be like, well, that's weird. I don't wanna go, right? You can't just tell someone, hey, you gotta read my essay, but I'm not telling you what, what's in it. <laughs> you can't do that. So um, that's the whole point is you're gonna tell them the three things that they're gonna look at. Now it says make a, gen a general statement about your topic, which can connect easily to body paragraph number one, as that's the very next thing which they will read. This I think was one of the last things I wrote. I, I was like, I don't know what to write in here. So basically I have to look here, what is this body paragraph about? And then I go back and I have to say something that kind of talks about this and hints at the next thing. And the best I could come up with was, education is the key to opportunity. Without universal access to education, we place limits on those who cannot financially afford to learn. So again, I don't, maybe, maybe it worked. Maybe it didn't. That's your opinion. I don't know. So body paragraph number one, write an interesting and generic statement about your topic. I said, we are not equal. No one is born equal. But to further oppress the less equal, yes, I was being sarcastic there. The Canadian government supports financially oppressing the working class. So it says reword this statement. All you have to do is find synonyms to rephrase what you just said. Again, I just, I'm putting this in other words so that my reader has to hear the idea again. So I said, tuition fees for the middle class or the elite is a minor nuisance. Tuition fees for the working class is an impossible hurdle that ensures that the rich get richer and that the poor stay poor. So directly tell the reader what the topic of the body paragraph is. It is important to analyze how post-secondary tuition fees creates a class system in Canada that oppresses the working class and hinders equality for all students. So provide an example. I had to do some research. I definitely did not know these numbers off the top of my head. These are not guesses. I actually, you know, looked at like McLean's magazine and a whole bunch of other different websites to try and get like an approximate idea. So here's my example. Nationally, Canadian students enrolled full-time in undergraduate programs will pay on average $6,600 in tuition for the 2021-2022 academic year. In British Columbia, undergraduate students can expect to pay approximately $800 per year on books. In Canada, undergraduate students can expect to pay approximately, and actually here, I probably should have rewritten that because that was, it's kind of repetitive. So even there, I mean, it happens. I should have reworded that. $15,000 per year on residence. This includes a place to stay and food to eat. This means that any university student pursuing a typical undergraduate degree, living on campus in a small bedroom, eating cafeteria food, and purchasing the required reading material will spend approximately $22,500 per year. Like that's mind blowing. I didn't write down that's mind blowing, but it is, it's mind blowing. <laughs> so explain how the example proves your point. Current minimum wage in British Columbia is 1520 per hour. If an undergrad student can manage two four hour shifts in the week, then by the end of the year, they will have earned $6,000. This means that student, uh, th sorry, this means that that student will be short $16,000 every year for at least four years. 
by the end of their undergraduate degree, those students will be in debt $64,000. So here's my argument. A country that does not prioritize free access to education for all of its citizens creates a system in which the working class literally cannot afford to improve their living conditions. The poor are stuck being poor because their kids cannot afford an education that will help them to get a job that will stop the cycle of poverty in their family. Okay, justify your argument. This is this is a hard one to actually, what does that even mean, justify your argument? That means I've made a statement and now I have to argue it. I have to convince someone. So that's me. I'm now trying to convince someone. So this is similar to the caste system in India. When a country creates conditions that favor one class over another, the country ends up dividing its population into a hierarchy that is fairly rigid and difficult to break through. Children born into minimum wage earning families simply cannot afford to learn and therefore they take on most likely minimum wage jobs and their cycle of poverty continues. Meanwhile, families who can afford tuition for their children enable their children to get higher paying jobs and continue the family lineage of financial success. Okay, give another example. In Canada, in order to apply for a student loan in the form of an educational line of credit from the bank, so not the government, you need to prove that you have the financial means of being able to repay the loan. Essentially, you have to have enough money in order to be able to borrow money. This educationally is a nightmare. So explain how this example proves your point. So again, I'm just trying to, I'm still trying to argue. This means that children from families who are well enough off that they are making more than minimum wage, but do not have enough money to send their children to university. These children, these students, can oftentimes not qualify for educational lines of credit to finance a university degree because they don't have enough money to prove that they will be able to pay back the bank. So it says make an argument. This is where I'm trying to like sum, like not summarize it, but uh, kind of get to the point. Because of this, many students are too poor to borrow money. This is a fact. The banks will not lend you money if you are too poor. You quite literally, I know I overuse that word a lot. I love the word literally, but whatever. You are quite literally not rich enough to borrow money. There is a threshold in which you have to be poor enough to need to borrow money, but rich enough to prove that you are not too poor, that you cannot pay it back. Like it's, it's ridiculous. You have to be, you, you're, it's like you're not allowed to be poor. <laughs> so justify your argument. This is asinine. We have brilliant students in our country who through no fault of their own are too poor to learn. This is a failure of our country. We have students who could be shaping the future of our nation, but instead are not given the opportunity to learn. This is such a shame. So write a statement that gives the reader some idea of how important this argument is or how significant it is. This is kind of actually, I've realized this is a hard one for me because you're trying to then give people, it's almost like the big picture. Like, why does this matter to the world? Why is this a thing? So Canada is a developed country, a member of the UN, and a supposed champion of human rights. It is ludicrous that in this day and age, our fine country is still forcing its children, and literally, legally, kids are, are still children when they're going to university because they're, they're not legally adults. Most students are still legally underage when they begin university, so to pay for an education. This is equivalent to taxing the poor. This is financial oppression and subjugation of the working class. Which basically, I kind of wanted to say that because that sounds like something that would happen in a country far away that has like a dictator for a ruler. You know, that like you would, it's like taxing the poor. You'd think that would never happen in Canada, but it does. This is like a, a prime example of, of poor people being, it's like taxed because they can't afford to learn, which means that then they're stuck being poor forever. So tie this back into your thesis statement. So what I actually did is I went up to the top, I copy pasted this line and I stuck it in here. So I said, post-secondary education in Canada should be free for all Canadian citizens. There it is. So that no matter the financial success of the family that the student is born into, they may have a chance at bettering their own situation and ending their own cycle of poverty. Poverty should not be a life sentence, but in Canada, it's a generational sentence. Make a general statement about your topic, which can connect easily to body paragraph number two. So equality is telling someone that they deserve to be here as much as the next guy. Ensuring that those opportunities exist is equality in action. So this was me trying to, to connect body paragraph one with body paragraph two. I tried to make a statement um, by using the word equality um, that somehow bridged those two. It's You decide if it worked. So body paragraph number two, it's all the same stuff on the left. It's all the same prompts, um, I just now with different information. So it says, write an interesting and generic statement about your topic. So Denmark, Finland, and Sweden all rank within the top 10 countries for academic performance. 
every time there's a new test of measurement for academic performance, students in Denmark, Finland, and Sweden outperform almost every other country in the world. It is worth mentioning that all three of these countries offer free post-secondary education. So right away, I wanted to have a fact that would make people realize like, oh my gosh, academically, the strongest countries, they have free university. Like it's like, hmm, light bulb. What is that telling us? So reword the statement. All you have to do is find synonyms to rephrase what you just said. Scandinavia is an academic powerhouse that consistently ranks within the top 10 countries of the world. I know Scandinavia is not a country, but it's a collection of countries year after year. Unsurprisingly, in Denmark, Finland, Norway, Iceland, and Germany, tuition for post-secondary education is free. So some of the top educational countries have free university. That should be a major flag for all countries around the world. Uh, directly tell the reader what the topic of the body paragraph is. So I say it is important to analyze how free post-secondary education impacts student, uh, sorry, success rates. Provide an example. When students know that they can afford their future, they make the most out of the present. Although Canada consistently rates within the, t uh, rates? Maybe I should have had ranks, but oh, I'll stick with rates. Rates within the top 10 for educational attainment. It is interesting to note that of the top 10 countries for academic performance for 2020, five of those countries have free tertiary education and three are heavily subsidized by the government. So when you look at that, this is, it's actually mind blowing. The top 10 academic countries in the world, half of them, it's free for university and three of them, the government heavily like subsidizes. If you don't know that word, it's like they, they, they contribute um, significant amounts to the university so that the students don't have to pay as much. Explain how the example proves your point. When students know that no matter their income, that they can go to university so long as they have the grades, then they apply themselves more and choose a path that is rewarding and meaningful to them. Make an argument. When students know that there is no money in the family to afford college or university, then they invest less in high school and generally don't push themselves to achieve success. Justify your argument. Students who know that the door is closing at the end of high school don't fully apply themselves to get top marks. Students who know that the world is their oyster after high school apply themselves more effectively and reach for opportunities. If all Canadian students knew that they could study in a college or university free of charge, we would have more students finding success in high school and even more students finding success in post-secondary. So give another example. Many students begin university not knowing what they want to do. Others don't even begin university because they have no idea what they want to do. Typically though, students who don't know what they want to do stumble across a class along their way that interests them and this helps them to find direction. If students struggle to afford tuition, they are less likely to attend university to explore their options, as they might fear that they will waste their money in the process. Then they will never be exposed to opportunity because they, opportunities because they don't even know what is out there. And again, I've heard this time and time again, again, I've been teaching forever. This is what happened. Kids, they're like, oh, I don't want to go to university because like, I don't really know what I want to do. But I bet you if they knew that university was free, they would at least try it out. Because kids that go to university, they're like, they're like, well, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but then I took this class and it turns out I love art history. But kids that don't even get in, in, through the door in a university, they don't even know what's there. So how are they supposed to fall in love with the course if they don't, if, if they can't even try? So explain how the example proves your point. If students know that they can afford to explore educational opportunities, then they're more likely to experiment with those options and find success. If students lack clarity, guidance, or inspiration, then they're going to be less likely to spend money on tuition to explore possibilities and not even enter the post-secondary education system. Make an argument. Tuition stops people from finding success. Tuition is a hurdle that many people cannot overcome. Justify your argument. Money should not be a barrier to education. Money should not be what comes in the way between a person and potential success. Write a statement that gives the reader some idea of how important this argument is or how significant it is. Again, this is a hard one. This is trying to make like a, um, like an awareness, like a, like a bigger picture sort of thing. So students are kids, like literally until they're basically in their second university, they're, they're still legally children. We want our kids to have as many opportunities as possible, not limitations. We want to expose our students to options, possibilities, and chances for success. When we impose tuition fees, we create barriers. We impede success. So tie this back into your thesis statement. Again, I actually just copy pasted. Post-secondary education in Canada should be free for all citizens so that all of our learners can find success, not just those who can afford it. 
make a general statement about your topic, which can connect easily to body paragraph number three. So body paragraph number three, I'm talking about, oh, I'm forgetting what I'm talking about. What do I talk about? Oh, um, countries do better if they have a better education system. So I have the Canadian government has a responsibility to ensure that all Canadian children, regardless of socioeconomic class, have equal access to opportunities. Because I guess I'm, I wanted to go with the idea of opportunity as countries that are better educated generally have more success. So body paragraph number three. Same stuff as the other body paragraphs. So write an interesting and generic statement about your topic. Some people say that money can't buy happiness. Those people have clearly never struggled to pay tuition. So reword the statement. All you have to do is find synonyms to rephrase what you've just said. We all have dreams. And again, this is, I actually didn't even really reword, reword this. I've just kind of more expanded on this idea. This is like, let's say step number one. This is now kind of like step number two. So we all have dreams. Maybe our dreams are to be rich, famous, go on fun vacations, or live in a nice house. Most of our dreams require money to achieve them. Not all, but most. We live in a country where we are forcing people to give up their dreams because they can't afford their dreams. And these are not outlandish dreams. These are people who dream of becoming doctors, teachers, counselors, writers. When a country imposes tuition fees, their citizens learn that their dreams are literally not worth investing in, in the eyes of the government. But in turn, by withholding financial support to the citizens, the country fails to profit. By not investing in its people, the country limits its own growth. So it's almost like the country's trying to save money, but it's like shooting itself in the foot at the same time. So directly to tell the reader what the topic of the body paragraph is. It is important to analyze how the better education, how the better the education system is, the better the nation's measurement of success. So provide an example. When we, and again, I had to do research on this. I don't know this stuff off the top of my head, okay? When we look at various measurements of national success, such as the GDP, which stands for the Gross Domestic Product, the UN World Happiness Report, and the poverty rate, some very interesting trends emerge. The more socialist countries like Denmark, Finland, Iceland, and Norway are countries which continually outrank other countries. Not only are they incredibly educated, but they are also happy and financially successful. The countries with the most lamentable data are countries with abominable education systems that measure poorly on the happiness scale and have unsuccessful economies. So explain how the example proves your point. Education is tied to happiness. Education is tied to success. Scandinavia is proof of this. The more educated the country, generally the better off the country is. Education is the key to success. So make an argument. Now I have to kind of like make it succinct. It's like get to the point. If Canada were able to provide free tertiary education, we would be able to help more of our citizens. This in turn would contribute to a higher GDP and happiness rating. Justify your argument. People who feel capable, valued, useful, and have found meaning in their lives feel happier. If education can give someone a career or an opportunity that fulfills their needs, then this makes for happier people. The wealth of the nation lies in its people. The more educated they are, generally, the better off the country is. By eliminating tuition fees, Canada could theoretically boost its GDP and ensure a higher level of happiness for its citizens. Okay, give another example. This was actually really hard to do because I was like, I don't know, I just used up my best arguments. What else am I going to say? Um, so um, I was actually just Googling stats and I came across Stats Canada. And then that inspired me to, uh, like, then I found a really good quote and I was able to use the, some of the facts in the quote. So according to Stats Canada, people with higher levels of educational attainment volunteer more, are healthier, and trust other, should, should say others, more readily. That's kind of interesting. So the, the more educated you are, you're going to volunteer more, you're going to be healthier, maybe because you know how to be healthier, maybe you've, you've done research, eat healthy eating habits, you know when to go see a doctor, who knows, um, and you're going to trust other people more readily. So that's a fact according to Stats Canada, I believe it is 2014. Explain how the example proves your point. So two of the largest expenses in Canada are healthcare and education. There's a correlation between health and education. So generally speaking, the more educated you are, the healthier you are. By imposing tuition fees, the Canadian government is withholding education. Ironically, if the Canadian government eliminated tuition fees, it should in theory save money on healthcare, but chooses not to. The Canadian government is going to spend money either way. It can either spend money investing in education or in healing those people who cannot afford an education. In this case, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That is a quote or like an expression, I guess you could say. So make an argument. If the Canadian government eliminated tuition fees, then it would be also improving the overall health of Canadian citizens. 
justify your argument. A healthier population is a happier population. A happier population is a more productive population. The Canadian government needs to invest in its people if it is not for the betterment of the individual, but for the overall betterment of the country. So basically, if Canada doesn't really even care about its people, that's fine. But even if you invest in them, Canada as a whole will be better. So write a statement that gives the reader some idea of how important the argument is or how significant it is. Again, this is really hard to do, trying to come up with like a statement that's going to show us like the big picture. Canada generally ranks really well compared to other countries. However, uh, I should say we do not always rank first. Those countries that generally rank first, what do they do differently with education than we do? They have fully funded post-secondary education for all their citizens. So we are doing well, but we can do better. And we are happy, but we could be happier. We are strong financially, but we could be stronger. Tie this back into your thesis statement. So post-secondary education in Canada should be free to Canadian citizens so that we can improve not just the lives of individual Canadians, but the overall success of our entire country. Make a general statement about your topic, which can connect easily to the conclusion. We are not a successful country when only some Canadians feel successful. So here's my conclusion. That should be on the next page. So start with a quote about your topic. Education is the key to unlock the golden door of freedom. So optional, tell the reader who said or wrote the quote and why it matters. George Washington Carver eloquently expressed this idea. Education is synonymous with opportunity, growth, and prosperity. So write an interesting and generic statement about your topic. Again, just keep it, keep it bland, keep it superficial. When a country invests in its people, it prospers. Reword it. Again, come up with synonyms, just either add on to it or, or go further in depth with that idea. When a country gives opportunities to its citizens, then they're able to improve their lives. When we make micro improvements on a smaller scale, those improvements add up on a larger scale and improve the country as a whole. So write a statement that acknowledges that the other arguments are out there. All right, this is where we have to acknowledge that there, there is an other argument to the side that is not what we believe in. Um, so, although Canada has generally been a successful country with impressive literacy rates and academic achievement, there is so much potential that is lost because students who cannot afford to learn are not given the opportunity to get an education. So basically some people would be like, yeah, but Canada's doing well. And my argument is, yeah, we could be doing better though. And you know, not all of us are doing well, only some. So remind the reader about the three main body paragraphs, which he discussed. So this essay argued that post-secondary education in Canada should be free to Canadian citizens. We examined how all Canadian students need to be treated more equally by eliminating financial barriers that oppress the working class. We analyzed how student success improves when opportunities are presented instead of being eliminated. Finally, we discussed how the nations with stronger GDPs and higher rankings on the World Happiness Index are typically countries with better education systems and how providing free tertiary education could theoretically boost Canada's international ratings. This is, this can actually be one of the hardest things to do. How do you finish an essay, right? It's like you want a mic drop moment, you know, you want like a sign off that people are gonna be like, wow, that was impressive. <laughs> Usually it's good to end with a, a question. You can also ask a question and then answer your question, or you can make an observation and then make like a scathing remark about that observation. Um, I chose the route of ask a question and then make some, some observations. So after considering everything that was just discussed, it seems imperative to ask ourselves the following question. Why is Canada unwilling to remove tuition fees? Does this indicate an endorsement of Canadians to the class system that we have in Canada, where we use our education system to oppress the working class? Or does the Canadian government not remove tuition fees of ignorance and a lack of its own education into best educational policies and practices? Either way, forcing students out of opportunities because of financial access is not something that bodes well for our reputation as a country of fairness and welcome. When children are not automatically welcomed into our institutions because of their family's wealth, then we are not a wealthy nation. We have profoundly failed the youth of our country by not ensuring fairness for all. So um, I hope this helps with uh, essay writing for you, for you people. Um, again, my goal was just to show you um, the template and, and what it looks like when it's filled in. Um, and so I guess all I can say right now is good luck and I hope this helps. Thank you.